Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our content with your network. All right, everybody, it's the new year and things are looking up. We're excited about what the future holds, but some of us are still dealing with some of the traumas from last year, the year before, or even from childhood. How is it you keep going when trauma can sometimes have you stuck? Today, I'm gonna introduce you to somebody who is the person that has turned trauma into triumph. Everyone, please say hello to my new friend, Ms. Carol. Hey, Carol, how are you? I'm great, Ricky. Thank you. Happy New Year. Hey, Happy New Year to you too. I'm super excited to start another new diet. Anyway, so <laughs> Carol, you heard in the introduction, today we're talking about from trauma to triumph. Can you tell us just a little bit about who you are and where you're located before we jump into this subject? Thanks for asking. I am in the real estate business. I work for TTR Sotheby's International Realty. I live in Washington, DC, where I have lived since the late seventies. I grew up on the Jersey shore, so I still might have a little bit of a twing of a New Jersey accent. And I really have turned tragedy and challenges into what I now believe is triumph. Wow, that is so amazing. And it is also the story of so many of us here and watching. Carol, can you tell us a little bit about some of the tri some of the trials and tribulations, if you will, that you had gone through? I think it's most powerful to list them and then we can loop back. Uh, and I'll just list them quickly because we've all gone through some of them and some of us hopefully never. It started really with my parents' divorce when I was a sophomore in high school. I was then diagnosed with an eye disease in my late 20s and told I would be blind by the time I was 35. My dad took his life in 1995. Two years later, I dated and fell in love with someone who turned out to be a con man, and he took every bit of my life savings. Two years later, while out jogging, a woman ran a red light and hit me. And I really, truly believe, Ricky, that if those things hadn't happened to me, I would not be the person I am today. And that's what led me here to be able to speak to you and to help other people. Holy cow. There were so... <laughs> I mean, there's so much in there and so many people watching can relate to one, two, three, or maybe even all of what you went through. But I'm looking at the, 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 the succession in which some of this stuff happened to you. And I know our audience probably has more questions than I ever could, but I'm going to start here. The thing that you said is that if those things had not happened to you, you don't think you'd be the person you are right now. Talk I to know us I a wouldn't. little bit about, tell me a little bit about that. Well, and I, I'll just preview what my answer is by saying to you that talking with you today is, is it's a new me because when I said those things last year in a group setting of very few people, I was sobbing. And that's what led me here. So I think the my vision diagnosis when I was 29 was one that really blew my mind. And I spoke to my dad about it. And he's like, we're going in, we're in the 20th century, which we were at that time. And he said, there'll be ways to heal you. And I was led to healers. My dad's death in 1995 was really what turned my life upside down. I had, I mean, do any of us have an idea when somebody who you love 
or is a friend or a connection is going to take their own life. We had no indication of that. And my brothers believe that my dad had CTE, that oh, wow. he he played football in the era, right, where you wore leather helmets. Yeah. And that that really had um, uh, mm. an effect on him that in his generation, Ricky, people didn't talk about or identify. Of course not. Because you look at that time, you know, any thing that had to do with your brain or mental illness, you know, there, the stigma behind it was so ridiculous. So it was a huge secret. You couldn't tell it, your friends, you couldn't tell your family, you definitely couldn't tell anybody outside of your very small circle. Wow. Well, but they didn't even identify it, right? I yeah. mean, it, he was of the Lombardi era where mm. you didn't even drink water or Gatorade. Like yeah. you- you were a man you yeah, were coming you out of world through war. oh yes <laughs> you oh did my not gosh. say if something was affecting you um so that 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 trauma was then met with um in uh, i mean i'm still dealing with it because you the shock of it was something that that at that time I didn't see a therapist, you know, I was from a family where you hold your feelings inside. And then two years later, being as vulnerable as I was, here comes somebody who takes advantage of me. Sure. Exactly. And, and the level of trust that you had to have going in, because you were already dealing with so many things or had not yet dealt with so many things, you know, with the, your parents' divorce, your dad's this, and all, all these things. And so now here comes a slick Willie, who's like, you know, you're pretty, let's hang out. How would you have known? How would you have known? You know, a couple of people tried to warn me, I have to say. And once I was in the quicksand, Ricky, I was going down. I, and I and then I just sand. tried to save myself and yeah. it was too late. Mm. But you got out of it. Yay, you. I got out of it. And, you know, it's part of what led me here is talking to someone in that group last year said, you can help so many people because, you know, you feel stupid, right? When you make a mistake like that, but you're not. And and so I've gotten out of everything. Yeah. And I know that that's what led us to this connection is me being able to help people to not stay in that vortex, to not stay in that hole is to really have faith mm -hmm. and to know that you have friends around you. There are support groups, which there weren't at that time for me. I felt very embarrassed. But today it's not like that. Yeah. And that's the other thing, Ricky, is I wanted to be able to speak out and 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 be vulnerable and go public. So if people needed my help, they could reach out to me. I, I, I just think that is so great. Because like you said, when something like that happens, any scam, and it's, it happened last year. And I mean, the numbers are staggering with the amount of people that were scammed out of all their money, scammed out of their homes, scammed out of everything. And like I said, they were embarrassed and they were ashamed and not thinking to tell anybody. But in this day and age, yay, internet. Not only can you tell somebody, there are folks who will find that person. So as you went through all of these things, all these traumas, how, what helped you come up out of that to the place where you can function again? Because some of the stuff that you said, I'd still be sucking my thumb in a fetal position, rocking back and forth. How did you come up out of it? Faith. Oh, I love it. At Faith. the time though, mm -hmm. you have two directions. You go down or you go up. Yeah. And when you go that low, there's only one direction and I'm a survivor. And I believe you know, when, when my parents got divorced, we went from shopping at Saks to consignment stores. And that's why I say to you, if the things hadn't happened to me at a very young age, when the rug was pulled out in front of me, I don't know if I could have survived now. Yeah. So the foundation was laid. I was never homeless. I, you know, I, I, but I had to take care of myself. 
You know, I left home when I was out of high school because I didn't want to be around that toxic negative energy. Could I have defined it then, Ricky? Uh-uh. No, but I can look back and I believe that that's the blessing of being led here today. That's awesome. I love that you said looking back and, and you know, we've all heard the saying that hindsight is twenty twenty, And if we had known then what you know now, we'd have gone through it better at the time. <laughs> but going through it better doesn't always help somebody. Sometimes it is hitting the pits you know, hitting rock bottom and, and building back up through faith, through friends, through counseling, whatever, that people can be helped. So as your faith was being built, how did you start climbing out through faith? What did faith do for you that got you up and moving again? Yeah, what a great question. When I was diagnosed with the visual uh, challenge, I started seeking out healers in the 80s and nobody was talking to healers back then so that was kind of secretive as well and it was the that that platform of working with healers that really helped me and i think i there's really not one answer because it 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 the more people i've sought out over the years the more and more evolved people who have come into my life. Recently, over the last few years, is really how I can answer you in a way that has changed my life. It's through readings, through meditation, through meeting different people like yourself who really get it and surrounding myself with positive energy and most of all, believing in myself. But it hasn't happened overnight. This has taken years. And I think that's the other thing that's led me here to help people is it's taken me a long time. And I don't think listening to young people today that it has to take this long, you know, because there are people like you and like me that can help people and inform them. And we have podcasts like this where people can go and listen and know that there is a road going forward. And that, that's so true and so good. You know, you, you mentioned that surrounding yourself with the positive energy, getting people involved in your life, um, that going back to, like you said earlier, everything was a huge secret back then. In this day and age, get as many people involved as you possibly can, because in that in that surrounding, there is safety, there are answers, there is opportunity in surrounding yourself with these people. So Carol, let me ask you, if somebody said, give me three good tips that I can use to start going forward, what would those three things be for them? I'm going to put this one first because it means so much to me. I work out with a trainer who has changed my life mentally, physically, spiritually. So not everybody has to work out with a trainer. This person has been in my life for 20 years. I don't have whole ligaments in my left knee from being hit by the car. So that working out, getting outside, walking, whatever you do, do something to clear your head, walk in the woods. The second thing is, is seek out people to listen to either on audible or by reading a book, Wayne Dyer. I met him when he was alive back in the eighties. He has, um, he's passed away now, but there's beautiful um, videos and podcasts and things on YouTube that Wayne Dyer can help you with from the grave <laughs> and teach you about. Yeah. And third, I think you already said it, Ricky, mm -hmm. is love what you do with work, but surround yourself with people who you love and who love you and support you. Wow. Carol, that right there is so good and so much. And so many people need to hear that. Carol, if somebody wanted to reach out to you or even just continue the conversation, how would they, what's the best way for them to find you? I think email, my personal email, I can spell it. It's my name. It's C-A-R-R-O-L-L-D-E-Y at M-S-N dot com, marysamnancy.com. 
Perfect. Don't worry, everybody. If you didn't get that, all of her contact information is going to be in the description below. And don't forget, while you're here, like, subscribe, and share our content with your network. Carol, my friend, before I let you go, we need to play a quick game. <laughs> I'm excited, Ricky. You're going to do great. So <laughs> this game is called This or That. It is pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of a couple of things. And you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play, my friend? Ready. Let's do this. Android or iPhone? iPhone. Ooh, McDonald's or Burger King? You know what? I've only had one McDonald's burger in my whole life. So I'll, I'll go with McDonald's. Oh my gosh. That is a whole nother <laughs> conversation that we really need to delve into. I'm just saying. Dressing up or dressing down, my friend? Oh, I love dressing up. Oh, I know. Me too. Shopping <laughs> online or shopping in the store? In the store. Mm. House slippers or bare feet? flip-flops. I knew you were my people, Carol. I knew you were my people. <laughs> Yellow light, slow down or speed up? Oh dear. I have slow down. Smart girl. I'm so proud of you. And Carol, <laughs> finally, what would you tell your 13 year old self right now? Girl, there's <laughs> going to be a lot ahead of you. Take a deep breath. Be confident believe in yourself, honor your worthiness, and say prayers to God every night. Wow. Everybody needs to do that. You need to give that advice to everybody. That's okay. It's here forever. Carol, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Ricky. This has been even more than I imagined. Thank Yay. you. And thanks to your listeners. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, that's it for this time. But don't worry, we will, of course, be back next week with more Faith on Friday Presents.